What's up everyone, this is Joe. Welcome to another how-to origami tutorial. And in this video, I will teach you how to make the origami flexagon. All right, so you can do this with basically any piece of paper you have. All that we need to do is we need a one by two ratio rectangle. So I'm going to show you how to do that with this. This is a uh, standard printer paper in the US. So first we're going to start with this one and I'm just going to show you uh, pretty quick, which by the way, I will mention before I start, I go fast and I do that on purpose so that my videos aren't crazy long. If I'm going too fast for you, click the pause button or go to the gear icon and go to the slow-mo, alright? Both of those are great, useful tools, please use them. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this edge over to that edge. Now this can be a fairly strong crease, so take your time, make sure that all the edges are lined up, and then Go ahead and use your fingernail and make a nice strong crease like that. Alright, now we're going to unfold. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to fold this edge up to the center crease and this edge up to the center crease, kind of like a paper airplane. Now this one doesn't need to be very strongly creased, but it should also be very accurate. So make sure you're lining things up really well. Make sure everything's really perfect and then Fold. I'm not going to fold super firm though, I'm just kind of lightly pressing it down. Alright, and do the same thing on the other side. Alright, so now we have kind of paper airplane looking shape. What we're going to do now is flip it over and we're going to fold this top edge down. Okay, and we're going to fold it down until we see these flaps sticking up. So the crease will be right where these flaps are. Okay. So keep the center crease aligned and make sure that you're folding down to exactly where the paper is, the other edges. All right, now this one, you want to crease very strongly. All right, go several times. Now unfold the entire thing and see I've positioned the paper so that this is now a mountain fold. We're going to go ahead and reverse it. So fold it down and crease very strongly again. Now we're going to do a rip on that crease. If you haven't seen my video on how to do an accurate rip, you should go see that. I'll put a card right there-ish by the eye that will pop out in a second. And if you don't want to watch it, you can just take scissors and cut along that line. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a small tear. And then, as I demonstrated in my other video, we just kind of bunch and pull at the same time. And it creates a perfect tear. Alright. So now I'm going to kind of work these creases out just a little bit by folding the other way. Like that. Okay, so now we have a perfect 1 by 2 piece of paper. So we're going to rotate this 90 degrees, so it's now vertical. Actually, I'm going to zoom out a hair so we can see most of it. There we go. And I'm going to fold it in half so that there's a center crease running up and down this way. And again, take your time to line everything up, especially with this model since there's a, it's a, literally a moving part. Everything needs to be pretty darn precise. I think I hear someone's car alarm going off. Alright, there's our center crease. Now I'm going to unfold and we're going to fold these edges into that center crease, this one as well. Now this 
good. All right, now that we've done that, let's rotate it 90 degrees again. And you'll notice from a previous step that there's a crease running down the center right here. What we're going to do is we're going to fold both of these, edge, these edges, the far edges, into that center crease. And when you're done folding, unfold those. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to finish this grid by uh, whoops, subdividing between those. I should stop doing that. Um, this edge should go, let's fold it into this crease right here, just like that. All right, unfold. Now we're going to fold this edge into this crease over here, the farthest one. Alright, unfold that. Now we're going to rotate and do the same thing. So I'm going to fold this one into the nearest. Unfold, and this one not to the farthest this time, but to the second farthest. Just because uh, the farthest is now one of the ones we did earlier. Alright, there we go. So now we have perfect little squares. I don't know if they're showing up here, but we have perfect squares. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be folding in a slope of two. I know, math. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to make a fold that goes from here and runs down to here. So see how it's going down two for every one. All right, now we're going to go from here. And we're going to go down like that, and then from here, down like that, from here, all the way to the corner, and then this corner here. All right, we're going to do that, and then we're going to go the opposite direction. So we're going to fold this one from the corner through there and down, and this one I miss, go down like that this one down like this this one to the corner and lastly this one so there you can see this kind of like diamond shaped pattern that's the folds we're going for so let's go ahead and do that just fold along all of these lines Okay, so now we've finished folding in all of our diamond grid patterns, and as you can see, um, they cross at like intersection points. That's really important. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but that's something that's um, crucial to how this thing moves. Anyway, if you didn't, it should be okay for your first uh, try. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold in these edges to the center crease like this, okay? So this flap right here, this side, is going to go inside this flap. Actually, we don't know which one's going in which yet, so that's why I'm doing this, and I'm going to look very closely and compare. I'm going to see if one of them is bigger than the other. If you did it perfectly, there shouldn't be any difference, but usually there's a little bit of a deviation just because perfection is not easy. So I'm lining up the bottom perfectly, and then the top, I can see that this one is slightly bigger. So I'm going to put this one inside this, all right, and so here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to take this one and open up this flap right here, open it up, and I'm going to take this and stick it inside both of the flaps up there. All right, now I'm going to push until it is in 
uh, two square lengths basically, this whole side. Alright, it's very hard to do this without crumpling your paper, but do your best. Alright, so once it's in, you see that we have creases, but they'll be kind of misaligned because there's now two layers in there. So go ahead and refold along all the creases here um, to make sure that everything has the same fold because these are important. Alright, just fold here. bend around those points. Alright, unfold. So you'll notice that what we've done is we've created a ring here. And it's actually a pretty decent looking ring. Um, it's just kind of cool how it works out like that. But anyway, enough of that. What we're going to do now is make the actual flexagon. So I'm going to find where uh, there are tabs like this. So not here because this is a point but these kind of like uh, sides right here that press down, I'm going to press inwards on those, okay? So there's nothing here, but this one there is. We can press these in. Alright, nothing here, and we'll press these in, and that will be all three of them, okay? So now we have these kind of hexagon shapes running around like this. We're going to take the top point and push it back, alright? Try and minimize the crumpling and make sure that everything's bending around the crease line. Okay, do the same thing over here. Take these points and push them backwards. All right, and one more. Take these points and push backwards. All right, now once all the points are together, you see that it forms the flexagon. To start, you need to go slow so that you kind of work them in. All right, so that way you don't crumple it and destroy it uh, for the next time you want to use it. So just slowly start moving it by pushing these backwards, alright, and there we go, you'll see this side coming through, alright, now push these back, push it back again, alright, you can see it's starting to crumple a little bit on me. So that's why you got to go really slow and careful. Start. All right. So that's not half bad. It's starting to work in. There we go. Now you have an infinitely moving flexagon. These are crazy cool. Um, I just love how it moves and how it works perfectly geometrically. See how everything just fits together, perfect, and then just keeps on moving. Was my camera in focus? I'm sorry if it wasn't. I did not notice. But anyway, you see how it just continuously moves around like this through itself. The geometry is just amazing. All right, so that is how you make the origami flexagon. And it is a pretty cool shape, if I do say so myself. It's just something that's a lot of fun to make and a lot of fun to show people and impress people. And it's something that's not too difficult, so you can also teach them. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you're having a great day. And thank you for watching, I will see you in the next video.